To make this wire tree, of course you're going to need some wire and it comes in different thicknesses. I used a 24 gauge, I don't know if you can see that, 24 gauge and um, you can get the lower the number the thicker it is so have fun you can use any thickness you can make the tree any size you want to for this size that's about five or six inches tall I used a DVD or just a DVD case to wrap the wire around so it's gonna be smaller than whatever it is you're wrapping around because you're twisting and twisting so this um, made it a little smaller for my little eggs to hang on and you can see I took the eggs off so we can see what the tree looks like you're gonna need a couple of pliers needle nose pliers would probably be best I couldn't find mine and um, these scissors maybe these will cut the wire too this pair of pliers has wire cutters on it but you know whatever will cut the wire and it's pretty this thin floral wire is really easy to cut what you don't want to do is what I did when you get the wire it has a little slot right there I would l suggest leaving the wire inside the case and pulling it from there otherwise you end up with this mess and it just tangles up so easily and it bends and it's just a hard thing to get it all undone. So don't do that. And this is what we're going to be using and this one I'm going to have to untangle to make the tree. With the DVD case and starting with the cut end at the bottom of the case right here, I'm going to wrap this wire around about 20 times so I'm going to count and that's from here to the back that would be once and that'll be twice so that's going to be 20 times approximately again this isn't an exact science so there's two three trying to do the tangles four five six Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, seventeen, eighteen, quite a knot here. 1920. Okay, and I'll just cut this one at the bottom. The bottom here where the cut wires are are going to be the top of the tree because you don't want cut wires on the base to scratch a table or whatever you're going to put this on. And I'm going to slip this mass off of here and cut the rest of them, hold them together like so. Now I can fold this in half and get my pliers and about halfway in the middle of the wires. I'm going to hold them. Well, I probably won't need two of them right now. And just twist for your trunk. If you're using a thicker wire, you, I'm guessing you're probably really going to need pliers. In fact, I'm going to use them 
to get a tighter twist like that. Now on the bottom I just want to get in groups of two or three of the loopy thingies and spread them apart. so that they make kind of, it looks like a flower. Kind of, sort of. Spread them out. So the tree won't fall over and this is its root base. So, now what I also want to do is curl these um, root petals <laughs> a little bit inward like that. So then when I turn it over, then I can press down and it sort of makes them more evenly flat. And then if you want to still do a little more rearranging, however fancy you want that to be. Oh, and another idea, it's kind of cool, is if you have a neat piece of a um, piece of wood, driftwood or something, or a rock or whatever, you could put that on and then with the bendable wire, it'll just cling to that and you can use that as the, like the tree growing up out of the wood or rock or something that would look really cool. So, just an idea. Okay, now we've got our roots, we've got the trunk of our tree, and now I'm going to separate into groups these wires, going to be branches, and I'm going to do them in groups of, oh, five or six. One, two, three, four, five. I get six there. One, two, three, four. Five, six, actually. Um, you kind of want to have the wires that are together. This one right here is a little bit farther apart than this group, so I'm going to put that one back and get one that's closer together. So there's another branch. So just continue to pull out groups of five or six. Could be four too. It doesn't really matter that much. Until all the branches are gone. So I'll just kind of pause this and finish grouping my wires Okay, here's where the fun and creativity begins. I have seven groups here, five and six wires. So I'm gonna just start with one of these lower ones. And grabbing that group, you just start twisting. So if you twist in the same direction, that's a good thing. Um, all of the branches just keep twisting and I'm twisting in a, what would this be, counterclockwise direction. Now we've got that branch started. I'm going to grab, separate just two of the wires. Continue to twist in this counterclockwise direction. And it's automatically going to get these bends like a real tree and you just uh, leave them there because they're so cool. I'm going to grab the ends of this group and twist. 
twist and we'll have our first branch. We'll be done with its split into two toward the end branches. Okay, now go for the next group. Hold it about halfway from the top of the trunk to the ends and just start twisting again in the same direction. I'm going to separate them and grab. This one has two wires in it. Twist and twist those. This one has three wires in it. Grab those near the tips of the wires and and I'm sure you get the idea. <laughs> twist away. Now I have these two branches right here, this one and this one, are done. And I'm going to pause the camera while I work on the rest of these bottom branches and then we'll do the top ones together. Okay, now I just have these bottom ones done. I have two more left, I'll do them together. All in the middle, twist. This is a project where the less OCD you are, the better. Because you want it to look natural and gnarly. And if you're thinking, oh, these twists aren't aren't the same, or this branch doesn't look like that branch, or the ends are all uneven. And you try and make everything even, it's going to make it look worse. So, <laughs> so have fun with the, the mess and the chaos. really, you look at trees, they're very different and unique and not perfect in their growth, unless you go to a Christmas tree farm where they've been pruned regularly, then they're just, you know, perfect triangle. Pruned like a shrubbery. Last one. And yeah, they get caught with the other wires yet. <laughs> Be creative in the twisting to try and keep them from getting all snuggled. Is that a word, snuggled? <laughs> I like it, whether it is or not. Um, tangled together. Snaggled, snaggled. You don't want to get them all snaggled together. Okay, now. There's my tree. What I, I'm going to do if I want to hang Easter eggs or whatever it is you would like to hang on it. Little Christmas ornaments if it's for Christmas. Little hearts for Valentine's. Um, I'm going to bend these cut ends so that they're pointing up so that when you hang the ornament on the tree it won't fall off.
So I'm just going to do a little shaping, figure out how many branches I want up, how many I want down. I think I'm going to have three up here in the middle and the rest of them kind of down here, different, oops, different heights. And then just kind of angle these branches up, which in nature is going to happen anyway because they're reaching for the sun. And some of these end um, cut wires you can separate if you'd like. It makes it easier if they're a little bit separated because maybe the eye of the pin that you're hanging will only go on one wire. Well, it might not fit on two of them together. So you might need to have those separated. But that's looking pretty good. I like it. Up. There you go. A beautiful wire tree to hang or holiday tree or you can just leave it without things hanging on it. Like I said, like on a rock or something. How cool is that? And it sets up beautifully. So get creative and have lots of fun with that. This has um, lots and lots of uses. Uh, for decorating.